Now then, my name is Ryan Central and today we've got some more Borderlands news to cover. We have some new information on the Vault Hunters that we haven't played yet, Moe's and Flack especially. A bit more background on Amara and Zane too. So we'll go over all of that and then there's some other stuff around weapons that I wanted to highlight simply because not a lot of people know about the modded system and how it works in this game. As I've mentioned in every video so far, we have a giveaway going for Borderlands 3 right now. You can check it out in the description and comments below. Super easy to enter, but let's get started. These came from cosplay guides for each of the Vault Hunters, specifically looking at the color schemes, the suits, generally, if you want to cosplay these characters, what you should be focusing on, even going as far as giving the hex color codes for various bits of their outfit. But each of them also has a paragraph going over a little bit more of the lore, which tells us quite a lot about each of these characters. We will start with Flack who is an emergent AI driven in an ongoing quest for self-discovery. Flack wanders from world to world accompanied by beasts. While they feel a connection with the primal wisdom of animals, the social constructs of humans are a stranger to them. On their endless hunt, Flack's loyal Skag, spider and Jabba companions help them track and claim their quarry, be it human, vault monster or anything in between. It's nice to have a name for the third pet we don't know anything about really, the Jabba, um, which is basically the sort of ape monkey like monster that you can run as a pet too. The Skag and Spider Ant we know an awful lot about already, so that's fine. It is worth adding, in case you didn't know, the Flack uses the they, them pronoun. So if I mispronoun them at any point, it's still me just getting used to that, I suppose. But as you've seen on screen, here are some of the other images looking at some of the patches and buttons that he has and also the class mods are based around plushies of the pets that he has so you have the skag on the left the spider ant in the middle and the jabber on the right hand side which are cute little things and like people are pointing out i think matto said the same thing they have got to be selling these as merch 100 percent, they have to be selling these as merch so i'm really excited to get my hands on i guess the jabber one is one that i want the most out of these three but we'll wait and see we'll see which pet i like the most out of them too we can speculate about the abilities in a second but i'd rather go over all of the information for each of the Vault Hunters, go over the information, then ramble a bit afterwards so you get all of the information. For Moe's, we have this. Once a soldier in the Vladov army's Ursa Corps, Moe's left the service to pursue her own mercenary interests and hunt for the Vault. When the going gets tough, she could use her Didistruct pack to summon her heavy mech Iron Bear and face down an army without flinching, using powerful mounted weapons to mow the opposition down. A veteran of wars from across the six galaxies, Moe's and Iron Bear are a force to be reckoned with. This doesn't give us an awful lot of detail on her abilities and how it works. Uh, again, to quickly speculate, I do think that each of the skill trees that she will have uh, and the abilities will be focused around different weapons. One of the skill trees I would assume would be co-op play because some of your teammates can mount a turret on the top of your bear mech. So maybe that's one of the talent trees that you can go down, one that might be to play it as more of a tank, and then one just makes more stronger without a bear mech. But who really knows on the abilities? As I've been talking, I've shown you a few more of the images on screen. You can see a little bit of a canister which is used on her back. But I really wanted to focus on the Iron Bear really quickly. This is what it looks like, but as we've pointed out in the past, you can mount different weapons on this main picture that we've just gone over. You can see that it has claws on the side, but you can mount the weapons like on the bottom below. You can see here that it's just a mounted sort of rail gun, machine gun that you can run on this picture. But here it does look on the right hand side that you'll have a flamethrower as you have the fire icon here and it's a different weapon to the mounted rail gun on the left hand side of this most picture. So I don't know whether it's going to be each of the skill abilities if she has multiple ones like Zane and Amara do, whether they'd be based around the specific weapons that you could use or something else. But we know that it's the main focus is Moe's using the bear mech. Doesn't seem like there's going to be anything else that you could do in its stead. So that's some good information, some background on the characters that we didn't know an awful lot about, but we still found out some pretty cool stuff surrounding Amara and Zane. Zane especially. Zane Flint is the brother of the infamous bandits Captain and Baron Flint. He's been around the galactic block more than a few times. Over the years he's worked for, against and along with every major corporation, conducting espionage and assassinations for the highest bidder. With cutting edge technology and decades of mercenary experience, Zane uses his Sentinel drone and other gadgets to disorient, disrupt and destroy his targets. 
And as you've seen, some more pictures of him on screen. We know a good portion around Zane already, his drone, how his abilities work. So we will move on to Amara. Amara is a hero born in the slums of Patali. Amara is most at home on the battlefield or in a brawl. Never content to stand idly by, she uses her siren abilities to smash oppressors and dismantle her foes. While in her phase trance, she channels her siren energy to form powerful arms that can shoot blasts of force or crush enemies in their grip. Brash, aggressive and self-assured, Amara doesn't let anything stand in her way. And again, a few of the images from the cosplay spreadsheet that you can check out. All of that stuff's going to be linked in the description. So, just to summarise, we got some background information that Zane Flint is related to Captain Flint and Baron Flint. Does his own little thing. Moses ex Vladov, sort of confirming a theory that a lot of people have had. And makes sense because all of the other soldier classes are, are from different forms of weapon manufacturer too, and have left. Flak is a sentient AI, but he isn't Loaderbot, unless he is and they're just sort of trying to keep that quiet. And we got to really deep dive into how these characters look and work in terms of lore. Nothing really new on abilities other than the speculation that I went over. Each of the characters will have three main focuses. It's in their skill trees. Zane and Amara we know already. Flak, I would assume each of the skill trees would be based around each of the pets. Each of the pets bring in their own playstyle and way that they can work as a build. Moe's is the tricky one because she has one major ability that again might branch out in three different ways. We just do not know at this moment in time. Now that we've spoken about the lore and just general stuff around the main Vault Hunters, I wanted to talk about weapons. This thing that we're going over in particular is something that I wish I realized that was possible to do in the game itself. And we'll show you this with Baru in the background. He had a better look at some of the weapons, really inspecting them, but you can even break it down even further, looking at the damage. You can get a screenshot from that, like in other games, but this is where you get some interesting stuff. We'll break it down into screenshots. The first area is a bit more information around each of the manufacturers. For example, here we have a Vladov weapon, and it says, when the boots of oppressors sound, all workers must answer the call to resist. Vladov, the instrument of the revolution, provides unparalleled fire rate to bury the Borgios beneath a mountain of lead. Overthrow even more oppressors with Vladov's underbarrel weapon mount technology because two guns in one is better than one. So a bit more background on the weapons themselves and again pointing out that Vladov is all about the fire rate more than anything and the fact that you can change the weapon around as we've highlighted before. On the bottom here we have manufacturer challenges such as Vladov Vengeance, Boomstick, Underslung Hero, Steadfast and Furious. I would assume that the Underslung Hero one would be killing enemies with your underbarrel weapon and it's hard to say whether these will do something in particular for your weapons or just some other challenges that you can unlock for the fun of it. Next we have some information on the element of this weapon because it's vanilla, it doesn't have corrosive or fire or anything, it's just known as physical element and the game tells you how much damage that weapon does to health, shield and armour. Each of these will have different effects and interactions with different elements. For example, corrosive will be really strong against health, armor, potentially, but not shield. But also it gives us a bit more details at the bottom. Physical damage is useful against everything. It has no special properties, but also does not suffer weaknesses. So this is just a nice way for you to quickly look and see what elements on weapons do what. Just a nice simple breakdown. But the most interesting thing that came out of it, I found, was a complete breakdown to the weapon part attributes. Now in previous Borderlands games, for those that don't know, each weapon is made up of parts specifically, and each of those parts can be from various manufacturers as an amalgamation to make a certain gun. And these parts will have certain effects on weapons. You will have players that can literally look at a weapon and know its fire rate, that it's better when it comes to recoil, that it has a better rate of fire, just from looking at the parts of a gun. This is a skill that I haven't really mastered yet, but if you haven't mastered that skill, you can check this in Borderlands 3 to see each of the attributes to check the parts and exactly what they do. For example, here we have the underbarrel grenade, which is part of a Vladov weapon, but you also have an accessory which doubles the underbarrel grenade launcher's magazine size. That along with a grip, which reduces recoil, increases damage, and it's a good way to see when you're looking at the weapon as a whole, as we're seeing on screen, how that breaks down, where you get the 47% weapon damage from in each of those parts. I do not believe it is possible to mod and change certain elements. Listening to an interview with the main head developers, 
They said it kind of ruins the point of Borderlands. It's all about trying to get the loot and to get the god roll as opposed to manufacturing the perfect weapon yourself. I would like a little bit of control, maybe be able to change one of the weapon parts in this. But once you change one area, you can't change any of the others. I don't know though. I think too much RNG could be a bit of a bad thing, but you know Borderlands, it absolutely throws loot at people. So this is like an interesting bit of information that I really wanted to highlight because I haven't seen any other YouTubers really go over it in this fashion. Being able to break down specific weapon parts, I think is a really big feature. Not to sort of change stuff up, but to just see what parts do what instead of having to look online for spreadsheets on what weapon part means what and being able to work out is this the perfect roll of a gun that I could get or not. But the final thing that I wanted to go over in terms of weapons is what manufacturers make what weapons. And this was a really nice breakdown that came out of Redux on the subreddit. I said in a previous video that it looks like all of the manufacturers will make all of the weapons. And looking more into it to double check, it's still too early to say, but it certainly doesn't look likely that every manufacturer makes everything. But we do have a good idea on who makes what so far, just based off the pictures on the website. For Jacobs going from top to bottom, you have the pistol on the top, sniper rifle top right, looks like the assault rifle bottom left, and then the shotgun bottom right. For Tog, I think that's the rocket launcher top left, it would make the most sense. Then it looks more like an assault rifle, then a pistol, and then a shotgun on the bottom right. For Dahl, you've got the SMG, an assault rifle, pistol, and sniper rifle. For Maliwan, you have a new weapon type for them, which is the shotgun, which was in Borderlands 1, but not in any of the others. An SMG, sniper rifle, and a pistol. Hyperion are making SMGs, shotguns, and sniper rifles. Vladov is next. We have pistols, sniper rifles, I believe, assault rifle, and then a heavy weapon rocket launcher. TDRs are making pistols, SMGs, and shotguns. Atlas are making, I think that's the assault rifle on the top, pistol bottom left, and then the rocket launcher on the right. And the children of the vault are making pistols, assault rifles, and heavy weapons. So some of these weapon manufacturers such as Jacobs, Tog, Vladov, and Dahl make everything that they made in Borderlands 2, there's nothing major there that we know so far. Hyperion and TDR have less types of gun, but there is speculation of people thinking that we're going to see new manufacturers added. We know that SNS ammunition is around somewhere, but we're not quite sure specifically if they're going to be making weapons or grenades or shields. You know what I mean? Like, we're not quite sure 100% where their state is in the game. So maybe that would make sense. That's kind of what the Reddit post that we've taken a lot of this information of has suggested that TDR and Hyperion have less because there's more weapon manufacturers to add that will take up some of those more slots. But that's a lot of information that we've gone over when it comes to weapon changes, more information on the Vault Hunters, and yeah, just some really cool stuff that I wanted to highlight in today's video. Thank you very much for the support. For those that are watching me for Anthem stuff too, some more information will be coming out on there shortly. There's just absolutely nothing to talk about in that game. But I hope you enjoyed this video talking about Borderlands 3. Still a lot more information to come out. And in that time, I'll try and practice saying the number 3 a little bit more properly. Thanks for watching guys, take care, and I'll see you then.